welcome to Bavaria Talk. My name is Wolfgang Hübschle. I am head of Invest in Bavaria, the business promotion agency of the state of Bavaria. Bavaria is, with its capital Munich, the southeastern state of Germany. And uh, if you want more information on Bavaria, please visit our website www.invest-in-bavaria.com. Bavaria Talk is a format where we try to talk about uh, interesting developments in the digital area. Last time we had Franz Klatz with us, heading two incubators in the Munich area, and he was talking about startups and the ecosystem for startups in Bavaria. Today's guest is not really representing a startup. Welcome to Dr. Carlos Hertel from General Electric. He's representing the uh, Research and Development Center in Munich for many, many years, but congratulations, you got promoted only recently to being the head of General Electric in Germany. We invited him not only because he's a great guy and very educated, but also because he and General Electric are dominant players in the digital world. And we would like to talk a little bit about GE, what GE is doing in this area and what Bavarian can contribute. There are many, many words like Internet of Things or Big Data or Industry 4.0. And we would like to shed some light on what's actually behind these terms. So, but first of all, Carlos, please tell us a little bit about GE Research and Development. Yeah, Wolfgang, thank you very much, first and foremost, for the invitation. It's great to be here, right outside of Munich and yet already in the mountains, which is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, let me talk a little bit about what we do at, at Global Research. First, the Research Center is part of a global network of research organizations that we have that serve as, if you will, a kind of company internal R&D consultancy, a service provider to all of GE's businesses. And that simply means that the scope we have is enormously Uh, we start from healthcare, manufacturing technologies, aviation, transport systems, energy, grid, you basically name it. So we try to bring the latest in technology to the benefit of our businesses so that they can have competitive advantage with their products in the marketplace. There's one thing, I guess, that for the last two or three years has really come up as a new and, and pretty hot topic in, indeed. And you mentioned it already, what you call Industry 4.0, we typically call Industrial Internet, but it's the same term for the same thing. It is having more software, having more analytics, having more connectivity in the industry. For a research organization, that basically means we have to look at what added benefit can I derive by having everything connected between machines, between man and machine, And it starts from improved manufacturing, something that Industry 4.0 is truly focusing on. But think beyond that. Think of managing assets in the field. Look at fleet of airplanes. Look at the hospital as a complex system where more data and more information can lead to better outcomes if we analyze them smartly and actually derive action from those analytical results. That's something where researchers in data sciences, in computer science, but also in the classical engineering sciences are needed to pull it all together. So you're working for an American company, but you're based in Germany. So you know the Germans are not so welcoming to new technologies very often. So what are your arguments to convince consumers, but also companies, of having an open position towards new technologies you provide? What we basically tell people is that The new industrial revolution, as, as you termed it, is tackling the waste that we have in the system, almost everywhere. Waste in terms of unused production assets, waste in terms of time people have to wait for information, waste in terms of something unexpected that happens, which brings down equipment that may stand idle for days or weeks, potentially, since spare parts are missing, or nobody can be found quickly to repair something. I guess that is the key thing that the digital revolution is all about is. Look at where there are system inefficiencies, tackle those, and that should benefit, in essence, everybody. Right? Things will become cheaper, more available, more abundant. And I think that's good news for everyone, not only companies, but society in general. So this sounds like a really good story, but what about the challenges, especially for industry? Because we're talking a little bit about what are you doing in Germany, in Bavaria, in an industrial environment for Industry 4.0 or Internet of Things. Uh, is the more common term in the US or in English-speaking countries. If you talk about data-based services, you basically have to go often across elements in your value chain. You have yourself plus your end user, but you may also have your supply chain involved in this. So you have to build bridges, you have to make connectivities between players that very often otherwise go to market independently. 
They have sales transactions ongoing, but they don't offer something in a holistic fashion. So how do I build strong partnerships? And those partnerships can be with large companies, but in this special domain, it's very often smaller companies, startup companies that have these great ideas. The whole internet as we know it has grown out of small startup companies in a sense. Those have become multi-billion dollar enterprises, but it all starts small. So working with small companies as well as large companies in a mutually beneficial way is a key ingredient. So you already mentioned that innovation often comes from startup companies and you need collaboration with these startup companies, even as an industrial behemoth like General Electric. Um, you face, I guess, quite a challenge if you want to provide platform as a services. You have to have lots of partners and you have to go across industries. Your value chain is not like limited to a certain branch of industry, but you're going across industries. So um, what about being in Bavaria and in Munich? Does it help you? Is that the right location for your yeah, collaboration plans? And it, is, it is a great location for many reasons. One of is the Thanks. one that you were mentioning. I'd like to hear that. <laughs> right, absolutely. So I mean, look, what I tell people when they come to see us in the Reich and say, what is the biggest or one of the biggest advantages, I say, if I need to get in touch in a personal dialogue with someone who is a world leader in the respective industries, mm -hmm. And those industries can be from automotive to industry automation to chemical industry to whatnot. It typically takes me maybe 30 to 60 minutes drive in my company car to get a, find a company in the greater Munich area or overall in Bavaria, right? So I think that is a huge advantage. If you are just selling a standard product around the world, proximity may not matter. You may be concerned about transportation costs, about customs fees, about regulation in those countries, but proximity really doesn't matter all that much. If you are in the innovation game, proximity matters a great deal. So you want to be close to people since at the very beginning it's about asking the question of what benefit can we expect and then how do we actually develop a business model around these perceived and potentially real benefits. So that needs people get together, stick their heads together, sort it all out. I mean, you could have kind of design type workshops, you could have all kinds of little pilots that you start. But unless you are close to each other, this is hard to do. So in my view, one of the biggest advantages here in Bavaria is that you have so many leading companies in such a variety of industries that it's easy to connect and easy to make the first few steps before you roll something out as an established product or service on a global scale or at least on a European scale. So, and if you focus a little bit on the startup and the collaboration you have with startups, often it is said that startups need a university to collaborate with. So, you're located with your research and development center right at the city limits of Munich in Garching, close to the Technical University of Munich. How important is collaboration for you as an entity, as, a, as an industrial giant? So, collaboration in general is important, but that is nothing new. Since in many of the industries where we're in, we always had to collaborate with our own customers. So think about, think about the oil and gas industry, where not two plants are the same, where not two pieces of equipment are the same. And there is something that looks standardized, but in the end it always varies. So if you want to take something to market, you have to have your customer on board. Try it out with them, do the implementation jointly before it becomes a normal run piece of equipment. Now, what is new to us, I guess, for more, at least I can say for GE, but many other large companies also see that as a novelty, is how to work together effectively with very small companies. So our classical approach to working with very small companies would be either the company is interested in basically selling itself to a large company, mm -hmm. that happens often, licensing out something, which also happens quite often, just be a company to invest in because we think what they do is pretty cool and we would like to benefit from their success later on. We have done this for a long period of time. What we talk about now is a partnership that is very different. It's a partnership where those companies theoretically could try to move on on their own. They would offer a specific piece of software, a specific service that may end up in someone's app store and provide added value to the customers. But to get it there, they would need our input because they need to understand how we operate the equipment, how we actually put the equipment into a large industrial value chain. So they need to have the industrial insights they would not get from the university. At the same time, they need to be tied to the latest and greatest in R&D on whatever kind of software analytic systems or new types of connecting devices in a, in a fashion that wasn't possible in the past. So, and if your corporate VC 
a dozen elevator pitch for GE, which is, sounds a little bit unusual because a big corporation and a small company. Uh, so is GE actually proposing that with all the technical knowledge you have and all the customer relations, you can help a small company set up shop? I think we can. We do this around the world. Do. Uh, we do okay. this already around the world. I think it can be for the smaller companies enormously helpful. What those small companies lack is not only the capital and maybe I would say the processes and the rigor that we put into product development, but what they also don't have is insights into how the industry really functions. Right? Mm -hmm. What is a benefit to an end user like I mean, an aircraft company or in the wind turbine operator, right? That is something which we know truly well. So we have to translate, if you will, market needs into product specifications or opportunities for improvement that then the smaller companies can go after. So, and this applies also to the other industrial companies in Munich, or do you think this is specific for GE? These advantages for startups when collaborating with a larger company? I, frankly, I see many companies who are going down that path, many large companies, I mean, either from the industries we are in or from other industries like the automotive industry or the aircraft industry or, or whatever, sensors industries, I mean, you name it. They are all recognizing that, that this bridge, building bridges to smaller companies is a way of uh, sometimes revitalizing businesses that have kind of like aged and bumping them up with new digital capabilities, if you will, or moving, venturing into completely new spaces. So I see that as a trend. I would hope that we are maybe a little more adventurous in this respect and faster than others, but I can't claim that for us exclusively. Other companies doing similar things. Fortunately, I think it's good for everybody. So Carlos, we did speak a lot about startup and ecological systems for startups, but Bavaria is best known for its household names like Siemens, Allianz, Munich Re, BMW, Audi, you name it. So, and you're a big corporation too, or you're representing a big corporation too. So what were the reasons to uh, set down shop in Bavaria more than 10 years ago? So, so we are a research lab, keep that in mind. And research is all about people, frankly. It's, it's truly a people business, it's not about the machines. Mm -hmm. You need labs and you need infrastructure, otherwise you can't do much meaningful stuff. But it boils down to the talent at the end of the day. So first, I guess, let me emphasize Bavaria has a great pool of talents. And that's partly thanks to the industry in Bavaria that attracts people from outside the state as well, but it's also thanks to its great universities. I mean, you got them in Munich, you got them in Erlangen, and you got them elsewhere, right? So I guess Munich and, uh, and these cities are leaders in, in academic research and in educating top, top people up nationwide and maybe even, even Europe-wide. You might even go on a global scale and say like you wouldn't find many universities like the ones in Bavaria that have the same level of quality in the education um, of young engineers. Um, the second piece um, that's critical is, of course, the ecosystem that we are in. Uh, in principle, you can set up a factory on a green field, but a research lab, you cannot. A research lab needs the exchange with the outside environment. Mm -hmm. uh, we mentioned already the large companies that are here that we like to work with, but there's also many mid-sized companies across the state that offer either great services to us, might be partners for research consortia. It is essential that you are in touch with a broad variety of experts in the various fields. Not all of them can be in-house. You have to go outside as well. And that's why you want to be located in a hotbed of innovation and research and advanced technology that Bavaria truly is. Again, in Germany, but also Europe and probably globally. The third element I'd mention is you want to be sitting somewhere where it's easy to attract people and to retain people, since again, it comes down to the individual researchers you can hire. So Bavaria is a great place to live. It's in the heart of Europe. It has to offer lots of value also outside your daily job routines. It is very well connected to other parts of Europe. And in the end, as I said also, it has many job opportunities that brings people into the state so we can actually benefit from that pool of talent that already exists. I think these are key elements that, that make Bavaria a preferred choice. Frankly, I have not been part of the finding committee, the search okay. committee, but I can tell you, I've, in hindsight, it has been a great decision. I'm very happy that it came out the way it did. So thanks very much, Carlos, for coming and thanks very much for your valuable insight on a wide variety of topics. If you enjoyed Bavaria Talk, please visit our website to download further information and please share our blog and uh, we invite you. If you have an interesting story to tell, please tell us and we might do this over again with you as our visitor.
Thank you very much. Thank you.